So today we're gonna to be fitting Taylor for an air vest. And because an air vest is a piece of safety equipment, measurements are really important. And we wanna make sure that it fits appropriately because of course, what fits best is going to protect best. Now, if I'm working with a client face to face, it is very easy to try different things on, but we work with a lot of clients virtually. So the measurements become very important, not just how to measure, but where to measure. So today we're gonna show how to do some measurements. So first thing, Taylor, put your arms up for me and I'm gonna get into your personal space a little bit here. And the first measurement is gonna be the chest right across the widest part of the chest. So we're gonna take that measurement. And then the next measurement that we're gonna take is going to be the natural waist. I'm not gonna cheat and tell everybody your measurements, Taylor. <laughs> So the natural waist is gonna be where your waist naturally indents. And then the next measurement that we're gonna take is going to be the hips. And I typically like to measure right below the belt line is where I'm measuring for the hips. So you can see that those three measurements are very straightforward. The key is, and we'll show this when we get a vest on Taylor, we wanna make sure that the canister and trigger system is sitting very flush against her torso, not too tight, but not floating around. So those measurements are really important. Now, the fourth measurement is a little bit more tricky, and that is going to be the back measurement. The back measurement, we're measuring from the base of C7 down to the SI joint. So C7, if you're not a doctor or a medicine major, you've got a knot at the base of your neck that sticks out, and that is your C7 vertebra. And you wanna start measuring right at the base of that, and you're measuring down to your SI joint. And the way that you can identify your SI joint is you've got two dimples a few inches above your rear crevice that indicates your SI joint. Now, we're usually not asking people to undress and show us that area. Um, if you have Euro seat breaches, it tends to be around the area of the Euro seat. But one of the easy ways that we can tell is we typically look for about one hand width between the base of the saddle and the bottom of the vest. And you can see here on Taylor that this measurement, this one hand width works perfectly. So I'm basically measuring to where my thumb is, or in this case, exactly where the Euro seat seam is. And this is the measurement. So the back measurement is really important because we wanna make sure that we're getting enough coverage or as much coverage as possible of the lower back and the tailbone, but we also don't want it to be too long where a client is potentially sitting on the vest or the vest starts bunching in this area or worse, that it's so long that a rider can't tuck and roll in the event of a fall because we always want to make sure that a rider can tuck and roll to roll away from danger if they are falling from their horse. So this vest actually fits Taylor perfectly. You can see that it's fitting very comfortably against her body. We're not seeing the elastic really pulling. She's got plenty of stretch left in the elastic. This is very important. We don't want you to be at the end of the stretch of your elastic when you're wearing your vest because we need for the vest to have room to expand outwards when it deploys. If you are at the end of your stretch, the vest isn't going to have anywhere to go but inwards and that's not going to be a comfortable feeling. So we want to make sure there's enough stretch especially if you're living in a colder climate and you're having to layer your winter layers underneath your vest, that same rule applies. You wanna make sure that you still have enough stretch left in your vest, even after you've got all of your layers underneath. Now, on the flip side, we don't want it to be so loose that the canister and trigger is floating around on her body or pulling too far off. And you can see here that it doesn't move very far off of her torso at all which is another thing that we're looking for. We can see here, if you put your arm forward a little bit, we've got good hip coverage here on the sides. And again, on the back, as we look for that one hand width, this vest is exactly hitting that one hand width that we measured to previously. 
and it's sitting nice and flat against her back. We're not seeing bunching in this area and she's got plenty of room to be able to lean forward, get in her two point, tuck and roll in the event of a fall. So this is an example of a vest that is much too small and there are a couple of really easy ways to identify that it's too small. So go ahead, lift your arm up, Taylor. So first of all, I struggle to even get my fingers underneath of here. There's virtually no stretch left underneath of this. It wouldn't surprise me after wearing this if Taylor has a little red band uh, around her, her hip area because this is so snug. Also under here, this is very snug. Um, so when she's riding, this is gonna be riding up into her armpit. This is gonna be uncomfortable for her. You can see the stretching that's happening here um, as well under the arm. And this is just sitting almost too flush against her torso. Like I can't move it at all off of her torso. So all of this is just much too snug. And then if we come around to the back, this is sitting almost above the iliac crest of her hips. And we are nearly two hand widths from the base of the saddle. So we're missing out on a significant amount of lower back and tailbone protection. So this is definitely a vest that I would say is too small. It's riding up to find her natural waist because it's so snug. And as a result, we're getting some additional bunching here that we try to avoid whenever possible. This is an example of an air vest that is clearly too large for Taylor. So first of all, you can see it just looks really gappy on her. It's sitting up here. Um, when I go to pull the canister and trigger system, it's like floating all over her torso. She will notice that when she rides, which we certainly don't want. It also means that if we're pulling in the events of a fall, it's shifting and the risk there is that the vest might inflate over areas that it wasn't really designed to protect. And the whole point is to have an air chamber over the vital body parts that we want to have protected. Um, go ahead, lift your up, arm up, Taylor. So we see we've got a ton of gapping under here, a ton through here. Again, it's just shifting all the way through the vest. And then in the back, you've got a ton of bunching here. It's much too long um, to the point where it's nearly touching the saddle when I pull it down. And when the vest inflates and straightens, you're gonna have two things happen in the event uh, of somebody wearing a vest this badly missized. One, when it straightens, it's gonna risk hitting her helmet and pushing her helmet forward, which we want your helmet obviously to be stable on your head to protect your head. Um, and two, it's gonna be so long that it may very well impede Taylor's ability to tuck and roll in the event of a fall. So all the way around, no pun intended, this does not fit her appropriately. And this is a bit of an ex exaggerated example, but these are just some of the things that you want to look for to make sure that a vest fits appropriately. So here we have Taylor back in the appropriate fitting vest. Um, again, the measurements are really important because what fits best protects best. Uh, what I will say is that the size charts can be a little bit challenging on these. So we really do encourage that you reach out to us if you're shopping online. We love helping people. We wanna make sure you get into the right product. So we really encourage people to reach out to get us their measurements so that we can make recommendations on not just sizing, but also brand and model because each one is cut a little bit differently, just like each of us is built a little bit differently. So there are some vests that are better for some body types versus others. And that's exactly what we're here for, is to help give you the guidance to get the best vest um, so that it can really help keep you safe in the saddle.